Welcome back to Normal Distributions again. This time we're going to go in the opposite direction, finding values. In other words, we're going to start with probabilities and get the values. In the previous section, we took the values and found probabilities associated with certain areas. This time, we're going in reverse. And we're going to go to a different place on our calculators. So, hold on to your hats. These are some of the things we're going to do, and I hope you'll find them pretty easy. Remember, z-scores have a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. With that said, we're going to go to the same place on the calculator to find our values. So we were asked to go from x to a probability before. In other words, and let's pick up my pen here. Pen. So before, we had x's and we found probabilities. Now, we're going to go the opposite direction. Now, let's start with a real simple one. And guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to start by drawing a picture. Now, you might ask me, what kind of picture can I draw? Well, we've got the normal curve. That's a start. Remember, we're talking about z-scores. So, zero's in the center somewhere. Also remember that for a normal curve, we've got symmetry. And 50% of your area slash probability will be over here. And 50% over here because of the symmetry. Each part is half of the whole, and the whole is 1, or 100% if you wish. Now, we want to find the z-score that corresponds to a cumulative prop area of 0.3632. Give that a thought. What is the area of 0.3632 going to look like? Okay, draw a picture. Cut it in half. This part over here is 0.3632 plus something extra to make this half be 0.5. So what we must have is we've got this area in here because it isn't even a half yet. So we're looking for a z-score right here. So, let's see what we get. We also might notice that since the z-score is here, and zero is there, this z-score we get for this area is going to be a negative number. Now, how do we get it? Before, we used normal CDF to go from an X value to a probability. So how do we do the opposite? We're going to do the opposite by going we're going to inverse that operation. We're going to take it in the opposite direction. What we're going to use oops write that again. We're going to do the opposite or the inverse. We're going to use inverse normal. How do we get there? Well, we're going to start just as we did before. We're going to hit the second key. And the VARS key, which gives us the distribution menu. And take a look at where that takes you. Take a look at it at the line two. Second distribution. Number three on the list is inverse normal. We're going to use that 
to go from probabilities to x values or probabilities to z values where these x values can have any mean or standard deviation the z scores have a mean and standard deviation of 0 and 1 respectively so how do we get it for this one well we're going to go to the second and distribution we're going to pick out three just hit the three and that'll give you inverse normal so if I do it online one things I need to tell it is what's the area remember that is the same thing as asking what is the probability we're interested in second we're going to have to tell it what the mean is that we're interested in of the curve we're interested in and also what the standard deviation is for that curve because these two determine what the normal curve looks like squished together separated apart left and right because of the mean the other thing some of you will have to tell it is where is the tail of that curve which tail are you interested in are you interested in the left Oops, there we go. The center or the right. So what do I mean? Look at our picture. Another reason for having our picture. So take a look at our picture down there. Where is the tail? It's on the left. So I'm going to use that area of 0.3632. Since I'm talking about Z scores, that mean will be zero, standard deviation will be one, and because of my picture, I'll be saying left. So all you need to do is move that tail indicator to the left. Oops. down there hit to the left and we're ready to paste and run it now what do we get we get negative 0 0.3499 that's the value of this z right here and this is what we expected it's a negative value because to the left of the mean 0.3499 approximately now what if you have a TI 83 well it's pretty simple pretty straightforward we look at our distribution because our TI-83 is in particular always think of the left side as being where they're working then because this picture does indicate the left hand side from negative infinity up to this point we'll just put in 0.3632 0 and 1 and we'll be done when we get to a different situation we'll talk about it again there's our picture and well, their picture is a little bit nicer it says the same thing it's on your TI-84 or equivalent and it looks as though I've got a bit of a typo here because this S should not be there so I'm going to make a note to myself to fix this later for slide number five 
Okay, moving on. There's our z-score. z-score to two decimal places. The z-score next that we're interested in is one that has an area of 10.75% of the distribution's area to the right. So how am I going to start? You guessed it. Okay, where's my mark? Oh, I haven't turned on the pen yet. Oh, there it is. All right. So the area is 0 0.1075. And we want the distribution's area to the right. So our picture will look like this. Remember, it's to the right of that z-score. And remember, it's not very big. So remember the z's, zero's in the middle, and 50% of it is over here. We're talking about this side, so it's only about one-fifth of the area over here. So we're talking about an area that's got Oops, 0 0.1075 over here. Now with the TI-84CE, we're not in bad shape at all. We're going to the second distribution. Since I want to go from a probability to a Z-score or an X-score, inverse normal is what I'll need. I put the area in first, 105. 0.1075. Since I want a z-score, I'll automatically put the zero on the one there. And on the CE, for example, I need to tell that this part is on the right. So you'll need to make that slight change, and that'll give you your answer. However, if you've got a TID3, you don't have this option. So what you need is go to the same place to get inverse normal. You give it the 0 0.1075. You get 0 and 1. But if you give it this, remember the TI-83 will only give you areas from the left. If you want it from the right, you're going to have to put in 1 minus inverse normal. Because it'll give you this area. You want that. So keep that in mind. If you want the area on the right, you're going to have to take this area back here and subtract from 1 to get the remaining area on the right side. Either way, you're going to get 1.24. If you didn't get 1.24, back up, try it again, maybe watch and listen to me again, and make sure you get that number. The area on the left is this, so you could do that with your TI-83. I prefer a more direct approach, which will give you that. One minus instead of using this area instead. So Z-score of 1.24 would be the correct answer for that particular question. Next. A little bit different. What you've got now is a percentile. And this 5 means what percentage? So this represents the 5th percentile. And the picture looks like this. There's an area of 0.05, which is not very big. In fact, this picture isn't to scale. 
But the main idea is not to be to scale. That area is very small. And because the fifth percentile means that 5% of the population has whatever measurement that is less than that particular Z value, here's what we've got. Here's our Z value. The area in here represents 0.05 or a probability of 0.05. Now notice if you're a TI-83 user in particular that this is on the left so you're set. All we have to do is inverse normal. We want an area of 0.05. We want a z-score so a 0, 1. And you're set. If you're on the TI-84 TI CE though, you also need to tell where the tail is. The tail's on the left. So you have to make sure that you got left for that last parameter. And then you'll be in business. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's what it should look like. And remember, if you're a CE user for the TI-84, make sure you set the left. If you don't, even though you've got all that extra power, if you have the wrong last parameter, it's going to be messed up. And that's what you should get. Negative 1.645. You're going to see that number again, by the way. Next, find the z-score that corresponds to a 50th percentile. Now, could it be any easier? 50 percentile means half the people have measurements smaller than that. And that's exactly half. So our z-score is right there. Draw your picture, it's staring at you. In fact, you could draw your zero like this, couldn't you? But if you forget that that's 50% and that gives you a z score of 1, then just put them in. Notice for CE users, you need the left there. And there's your z-score. Zero. Next, how about a percentile of 90? Remember, percentiles are from negative infinity, or actually zero, up to a certain point. And the area of 90% would be almost all the curve. From the left, that means we're going out here quite a ways, maybe even further than it shows on this picture. But that doesn't matter. All we care about is getting a picture that gives us the relative positions of some of these numbers. Zero's in the middle, 1.28 will be to the right. That's all we care about. And that sets us up for success. So you'll have inverse normal because we're going from a probability to a value. And there's our percentile. We want a z-score, so it's automatically 0, 1. Well, automatic for you, not the calculator. And if you're on a CE calculator, you're going to need to tell it that you're talking about the part on the left. If you've got a TI-83, you're in business already because that's how your calculator works, from the left all the time. Put those in, and what do you get? Inverse normal, 0 0.09, 0, 0.01, left if you're a CE user, and there's our z-score, 1.28. Did you get that? I hope so. Next. Find the z-score that corresponds to each percentile. We're talking about 90. Why am I doing this again? It must have been a mistake. Or maybe they're just going over a different way. 
we can move on now. Oh, this is if you're using a standard normal table, which we're not. There are tables in the back of most statistics books that allow you to go from areas. Say, here's the table in the back of the book. Inside the actual table are areas. And those areas are decimals. Once you find one, say it's here, then you have to find the Z values by using what's on the top and what's on the left hand edge. Enough said. Now, the next part is how could we go from a Z score to an X value? Well, this is how you do it. To get the X value, you need to know the mean of your particular distribution. You need to know the standard deviation. And you already have the z-score. Just put those in that small formula and do a simple calculation to get the x-score. So for example, we're talking about cats. They're treated at a clinic. Notice, normally distributed, without that phrase, we can't do any of this because we're talking about normal distributions. Now it says the mean is 9 pounds. It says the standard deviation is 2 pounds. How do they know that? They've been keeping records for years and then they know the average is 9 and the standard deviation is 2. Historic. It's as easy as that. Now it says suppose you have a cat and that cat's weight has a z-score of 1.96. How much does that cat actually weigh? Here's our formula. x equals mean plus z times the standard deviation. X equals, the mean over here says 9 plus, and we need the z-score, and it says 1.96, and the standard deviation is over here, 2 pounds. All we need is a simple calculator. X equals 9 plus 3.92. X equals 12.92. Now remember, this X is a real value. So we're talking about a cat that's about 12.92 pounds. Most likely, since the cat wouldn't be still for us, we could consider that is about 12.9 pounds. And they rounded it off a little bit more. 9 pounds. How about this? What if we have a cat that has a z-score of negative 0.44? Remember what the mean and standard deviation were? mean was what? Let's go back here a second and check. The mean was 9. See, did I go too far? Yes, there. Mean is 9. Standard deviation, it was what? 2. So if we want the x score of 9 plus negative 0 0.44 times 2. Now before you hit the enter key though, take a note. This z score, if you draw a picture, back to that again, z scores have 0 in the middle. So where is this z? What's well, over here somewhere? 
So if this represents nine pounds, and you've got a z-score over here, that means that cat is weighing less than nine pounds. So that's what you should expect when you see this. And you might make a mistake if you forget that minus sign, because that subtracts from the nine, which is the mean. So about 8.12 pounds. Next, how about if it's zero? Remember, we've got a mean of nine, standard deviation of two, z-score though, what does that mean? And that's where you find the mean. So this would mean nine pounds. Bingo. No work whatsoever needed. But if you do use that formula, you still get the nine pounds. It's just that with the z-score in here at the right place, this whole term is going to be zero, and you're back to nine pounds. There's another picture. Notice that along with the picture, you've got a z-axis and an x-axis. This can be handy at times. If you start out with z's, you might want to put a z-axis here. But you might have reference, you might want to find those x values, so you can set that up too. And since a z is zero, same thing as a mean, and it tells you the mean is nine, so there's your nine. Your negative 0 0.44 is a z-score, which means on this side, which means the weight you're looking for is going to be back here, a little bit less than nine pounds. So let's talk about California peace officers for a moment. They have a training test, they have to pass a test to become California peace officer, officers. Again, it's important to see that it's normally distributed so we can use all this information we've got. We've got a mean of 50, so I'm going to put that out here. The mean is 50, and that doesn't have a unit. It's the score on the test. And, or you might say points, perhaps. And you've got a standard deviation of 10 points. What's the lowest score you can earn and still be eligible to be hired by the agency? Well, they insist that they only take the top 10 percent. Well, I'm going to draw a picture. And there's a picture because it's normally distributed. It says top 10 percent. That means only the best of the best. 10 percent is right there. Also, 0 0.10 is the area. You could also look at it as the 90th percentile because 90 percent of the people who take that test won't do as well as the people who actually pass the test to become California police peace officers. What's the lowest score you can earn which will be right here. If you get right there you just barely made it. So what is the lowest score? We're talking about an X. We've got an area of interest. And by the way, remember, especially if you've got a TI-83, you want to keep in mind that if it's 10% up here, it's 90% below here. So, if you have a, let's go with the TI-83 first this time. TI-83. We want an X value same place as if we wanted a z-value. We want to take that inverse normal path. The area that we're interested in 
if we're at in a TI-83, we're going to use that point 0.9. And since we want an X, we're going to have to use this mean and this standard deviation. So 0 0.9 for the area to the left, 50 for the mean, 10 for the standard deviation, and you're in business. If you've got the TI-84 CE, or one of the later TI-84s, you'll still go to inverse normal. You'll still put the area in here, but this time you don't have to use, you don't have to make that adjustment to put the point 0.1 there, or point 0.9 there. You can just work with this directly. So you put 0 0.1, to get the X score, you know, 50, 10, because those are X values. But you have to tell it that you're working with an area that's on the right. So change that if you need to. So you have the right chosen as the tail. And you should be ready to go. So there's the picture, 10% above, 90% below. The TI-84CE people can use the 10%. And the 83 people can work with a 90% because that's from negative infinity on up. And what you should see on your calculator with the TI-84 plus, this is not the CE. Because on the CE, you would also see that it says right, and you'd see a one right there. Either way though, And there's a there's the score you need to become a California California peace officer. So aim for a 63, and you can get into the program. Next, let's talk a little bit about cholesterol. First of all, we notice that. We're talking about women from 30 to 20 to 34, and the mean is 179 milligrams per deciliter. We've we'll, we'll talked about that before, and the standard deviation is 38.9 milligrams per deciliter. Now, we're going to assume that those values are normally distributed, otherwise we're finished. Find the highest total cholesterol level a woman in that age group can have and still be in the bottom 1%. So what does that mean? That means their cholesterol is pretty low, which hopefully is a good thing. So we're going to draw a picture. Here's our picture. It's at bottom 1%. So we are, are talking about an area way to the left. And we want to find the cholesterol level. So we're looking for an X score right there. And this will be an area or probability of 0.01. So what do we need? Inverse normal. The area we're interested in is on the left, 0 0.01. We're talking about X scores. So we need the 179 and the 38.9. Not the zero and the one because we're not talking about Z values. 
Now this will do it for the TI-83 people because it automatically assumes you're working from the left and we are talking about that area on the left. If you're a CE user, you're going to have to tell it specifically that you have the tail on the left hand side and then you'll be in business. So there's our picture. If you converted that to an X, see that's, that's the Z. So converted to a Z value would be negative 2.33. So you can put it in this way. If you've got a CE, don't forget to tell it's got a tail on the left side. And you should get about 88 milligrams per deciliter. Way below the 179 average. And that's it folks. We'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care.